when you go in the river and you're passing by the bushes, all of a sudden you hear this grunting. And those are the beavers saying, get the hell away from me. But, uh, or they splash with their tail uh, and try to get you away. One of that evening that I was camping, a little squall came up. And uh, you can see the, uh, the cloud. In the middle of the night, about midnight, it came over my tent and my tent started moving a little bit for a minute. I thought I was gonna be Dorothy in Kansas, but it just rained for about 10 minutes and that's about it, nothing else. These right here, right across the river, were other campers. Those are the two, only other two kayaks I saw, and they took off way before me because I hiked around a little bit. This is, on the right, you have shale. Uh, and straight ahead, you see what uh, Powell names the cross. Uh, these are two buttes that look like a cross, especially the closer you get to them. Actually, those buttes are pretty far away but uh, the way, that's the way they look from the distance. And again, this is the average water, uh, the way the water looks without rapids, without anything else in the mornings. After one o'clock or after two o'clock, you're going to see some waves because it's, the wind is gonna be just pushing you up those canyons. Also, here is a, a river, and sometimes you don't know which way the river is gonna go. This looks like the river is going to turn left. Actually, the river is turning right. So you never know which way you're going to be going occasionally. And you might be on the wrong side of the river. So you want to make sure you get on the right, correct side of the river right there. But as you can see, I have all kinds of stuff piled on the front of my kayak. And uh, because the kayaks are pretty small, you have to have water. There is no other water. I actually ran out of water about this was a seven day trip. I ran out of water the fifth day. So I pulled the water out of the river. I boiled it, let it settle and used it for cooking. And uh, that, was, that was fine, it was perfect. But you should have uh, at least three bottles of water a day per person. So if you have two people, you're talking about uh, six bottles a day minimum and times five days, there's 15, 18, 19 bottles of water. And that takes up a lot of space. This right here was an old river channel. The river decided to, I don't know, I think it was 300,000 years ago to stop going around this butte and go straight where I am photographing from right now. Uh, so what happened is uh, there are all kinds of artifacts around there. So I walked around for about oh three four hours, just looking around and checking out and hiking, uh, right, I ran across all kinds of uh, prints of mountain lions, uh, snakes, uh, even a couple bear prints. Uh, never saw any of them because they they're so quiet and they don't want to be around human beings anyway. But this is a beautiful area for hiking and exploring. And this doesn't look huge, but this is big. I'll tell you, just to go around this thing will be several hours, which I did thinking that I could do it in an hour and a half. Well, no, forget it. You can't do it in an hour and a half. Then I climbed up from my next campsite. I climbed up this uh, butte right here because I was looking for petroglyphs. I heard there's some petroglyphs up there. So my kayak is right around the corner and I climbed up and guess what I found? Right there. I found some really nice petroglyphs uh, from uh, people 800, 900 years ago. And th this is just so fantastic when you're walking and all of a sudden you, you're on the side of the mountain and you see where people lived uh, thousands of years ago or hundreds of years ago. And you try to figure out, okay, what, is, what, is, what does this mean right here? You know, there is a guy running with, an, with a shield now here you have a ram that appears to be attacking. Here you have a guy that has a hole in him, which I have no idea what that means. And there were a number of things that were already, you know, kind of disappeared because of the weather. Here's the other section of it. You see the rams, you see, uh, this looks like also a ram. I did count the toes. This person does have five toes, uh, but it's, it's just, you, you are in the awe, ah, you just go there and wow, you know, somebody 
800, 900 years ago lived here and painted this. If I could just for a minute touch the cliff and imagine of what they thought their experience is. It's just a fantastic, fantastic experience. I recommend everyone to do it. Um, Grieving River inhabitants. In the Crit Cretaceous, I can pronounce it, periods, there were dinosaurs. There were tons. This, this whole area is fantastic for dinosaur fossils. You can't take anything out, but there were dinosaurs all over this place at one time. Uh, the ancestral Puebloan and Fremon people came about uh, all you know, about a thousand years ago or so. Then afterwards, they were followed by the Utes, the Navajo, and the Paiutes. Uh, they had this area. Then fur trappers, explorers, and outlaws. The tons of outlaws came over this one. In 1869, John Wesley Powell is the one who went down the river from uh, Green River to Colorado River, all the way down. He mapped the entire area. He took three, I believe it was three months, and he mapped the area and uh, lost a number of people in the trip. But that's, Powell Lake is named after him. And he was a really uh, meticulous explorer as far as noting where he went and what he did. The hole in the hall, it should be the hole in the wall gang, Butch Cassidy and their famous robbers, Roost, are all this in this area, right here. So this has tremendous, I took my metal detector because I thought I could go treasure hunting and find some gold. Uh, I couldn't use my metal detector, so I had to leave it in the car because you're not allowed to take out anything whatsoever. Now here's a hike I took on the left-hand side. You see me hiking right here, and I went all the way up to these buttes. That took about uh, five hours because it doesn't look like it's that far, but it's very, very far. I went up to the top of this hill and uh, was exploring. And right here, since I were, I'm alone on this trip, I waved goodbye to them by myself, of course. <laughs> this is another campsite. And uh, this was a really nice campsite. I had a lot of wood, a lot of hiking, a lot of river areas. And it also, in the morning, after I heard some noise in the bushes, I saw these footprints. Now, this one looks like it has big claws. I'm assuming it's some big cat. This one is my, looks like a bear paw because it was bigger than my hand. Both of them are much bigger than my hand. So I don't know what these were. Uh, I'm sure there are experts listening to me, like Steve, who probably knows exactly what kind of animal this was, but I have no idea. But they left me alone, which is fine. This is another cooking time right here. This is chili mac with beef. Now I decided to take uh, all these uh, frozen, dried frozen food because they were very light. Although I did have some other things like a lot of candy and chocolate, which, and I even had some wine. There are a lot of birds, variety of different birds uh, that you see uh, on the river. Then the next campsite was Tuxedo Bottom. And uh, actually there was Turk's Head bottom, sorry, Turk's Head right here. And this on this side has a lot of Indian ruins, many cliff dwellings right here. And you can see my campsite right there. Uh, campsites are kind of rare in that particular area. So you have to, when you find one, you've got to grab it because otherwise you float to the next one, which will be, uh, you know, maybe a day later. A lot of jasper. You find tons of jasper there. Indians would make their arrowheads out of it, their tomahawks out of it. And uh, I looked at a whole bunch of jasper and then you leave them in the spot that you find them. You can't take them. This was my campsite. On this particular campsite, I couldn't drive the tank bags into the rock because this was rock. So I had to take boulders and tie it down, but there was no wind, but it was a really fantastic spot and take a look. I'm sitting there and enjoying, this was sunset. I'm enjoying a beautiful, beautiful uh, time. I mean, I, you couldn't find a better view than this. There were all kinds of different flowers. Like I said, I didn't know flowers, but they were really beautiful. This is of course actually from cactus. Now cliff dwellings. If you look on the left, I was floating on the river and I saw this cliff dwelling in one of the hills and I zoomed in on the right and there's the, there is the original cliff dwelling and here it is zoomed in. 
right, much closer. And here is another cliff dwelling. Now, take a look. Can you see where the cliff dwelling is? I'll give you like 10 seconds. Take a look where the cliff dwelling is. All right, here it is. There's the cliff dwelling. And do you wonder why is it that high? Well, because most likely the river was much higher. Over the 500, 700, 800 years, it probably just eroded more space. And the river, you can see actually the river where the river used to be. You can see the river marks. And I zoomed in a little bit closer to the cliff dwelling, and there, there it is. That's the cliff dwelling. And it doesn't look very big. But uh, imagine people living in here a thousand years ago. Then I was looking for a campsite for one night. The, I think it was the second to the last night. And I found this little canyon. And I was floating up this canyon. And here I found what I thought was a good campsite. And I said, okay, this is a great spot. However, I was thinking, okay, the river goes up and down. What if I wake up in the morning and the river is down and this is all dry? My kayak with all the stuff I have in it weighs 300 some odd pounds. I will not be able to get out. So basically, um, I decided to pull out of here and go to a different spot. But look how beautiful it is right here. I hiked around here a little bit, found all kinds of Indian artifacts, uh, saw uh, mountain goats and a couple other things, but uh, couldn't camp here. Now, then I reached the confluence, which is the Green River and the Colorado River. So as you can see, it says Cataract Canyon, hazardous rapids two miles. So that means you have to pull out right here. I camped over here overnight. Then I went over here where the boats were to pick me up. Up here is called the Dull House. This is a formation, a rock formation that once you hike to it, you know why it's called the Dull House. And it's a really nice place to hike. It says park and a lot of people before the river uh, before they leave the river, go hiking up there. As you can see here is part of the picture of the Dull House and their trails going up. This is Texas River, T-E-X-S. These are the guys that I paid to pick me up and my kayak and they took me back up to Moab, Utah because that's where I started. And uh, some facts, quick facts. Oh, by the way, this picture right here is on the other side of Turk's Head, and I hiked all around here to get to uh, the cliff dwellings because I didn't camp on the side where the cliff dwellings were. I camped on the other side. Some facts very quickly. This is 70, 730 miles from Orange County by car. Uh, you go to Moab, Utah, and that's where we were taken to start the trip. Fire required. Required to have a port portable toilet. You have to have a porta potty with you. BLM permit is required too, uh, which means that uh, it's only $35. And you get that a couple weeks ahead of time. And there's no limit. And not many people go down that river, so you can get a BLM permit very easily. Nothing can be taken out. Five-day kayak trip, canoe rental, pickup and end, tent, food, around $1,000 per couple, plus getting there. That's roughly what it costs to go down that river. And finally, I'm keeping within the time limit, so I'm waving goodbye here. I used to do that a lot since I was the only one on the river cruise, so I just waved goodbye from my, and my tripod was taking pictures or something. I used to, this is a number... 10 video out of their last 10 videos. Those, those, all those videos can be found on rivercruisecenter.com. If you're interested in this kayak canoe luxury cruise, call me. And uh, I am a start at twitter.com and instagram.com, river centers. And I'm be posting all the videos from all the river cruises, Asia, Africa, Europe, Green River on it to over.